Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I'll go over Survival Hunter Arena playstyle and comps in BFA. This video will also contain updated talents, Azerite traits and stats so you can create pressure for your team with the right talent choices. Jungle Cleave is an aggressive comp with good CC, good burst damage, off healing and a little spread pressure if you want to cleave multiple targets down at once. Both Survival Hunter and Feral Drift have a lot of mobility to connect onto most targets, so keeping up pressure as this comp is fairly easy. PHP has a lot of burst damage, but weaker sustained damage than Jungle Cleave. However, the off healing and big cooldowns the Red Paladin brings makes this comp really tanky versus most melee cleaves and allows you to eventually score the kill. Unfortunately, PHP performs weaker than Jungle Cleave against Spell Cleaves, since the Paladin will have to play defensive for the majority of the game. KFC has a lot of burst damage from the Warrior and good sustained damage from the Survival Hunter. The comp also has good synergy, since you can always land a Stormbolt into a Trap CC chain and by bringing a Warrior you also get a lot of peeling from abilities like Disarm and War Banner. Unfortunately, this comp has no all feeling, so it will be hard to survive until late dampening. For your talents, your standard build will look like this. Some talents can be swapped depending on what comp you face. For example, Viper's Venom can be swapped out for Alpha Predator instead when fighting a Holy Paladin that's playing with Pure of Heart, since your Serpent Sting will constantly get dispelled and provide no damage anyway, which makes Alpha Predator a better pick. Gorilla Tactics can be swapped out for Hydra's Bite against teams that will stack for the majority of the game. The damage increase is very minimal and it will depend on what talent you prefer. If you pick Hydra's Bite, make sure that the enemy team will stack, otherwise it's not worth it. Natural Mending is a standard pick and should be used in longer games where you can make use of the talent multiple times. Natural Mending is an extra defensive cooldown that can be rotated with your team and gives the most value. Against stealth classes like Rogues and Druids, you can use Camouflage instead. Camouflage can be used to try and find classes in stealth and stop their opener, or instantly trap someone out of Camouflage to go aggressive right away. For your PvP talents, there's one talent that should always be picked, which is Roar of Sacrifice. Roar of Sacrifice gives your team another defensive cooldown to protect the target from critical strikes. A small cooldown like this can be used during burst windows to prevent the use of other big cooldowns. Tracker's Net is good against most teams and should be picked most of the time except for when facing a double caster comp. Tracker's Net can be used to root healers or TPS away from the team or to root targets and follow up with a trap. Survival Tactics is the third talent which is good against most teams making yourself tankier and you can avoid big damage abilities with it, for example a Chaos Bolt from Warlock. Now let's look at the PvP talents that are situational. Mending Madash should be picked instead of Survival Tactics versus Assassination Rogues or Feral Druids. The healing effect from Mending Madash gets cancelled instantly when hit, but it does remove all bleeds, poisons and disease dots from the targets it's used on, making it a very strong pick versus Feral Druids and Assassination Rogues. Sticky Tar should be picked instead of Survival Tactics versus a Melee Cleave. Sticky Tar makes melees who stand in your tar trap for at least 3 seconds have 80% reduced attack speed for 5 seconds, making it a lot easier to deal with the pressure of a melee cleave. Diamond Ice should be picked instead of survival tactics versus any team with a demon hunter or shadow priest in it. Diamond Ice reduces the duration of your trap by 2 seconds but makes it undispellable which means it can't get master spelled by a shadow priest and a demon hunter won't be able to use reverse magic to get his healer out of the trap. High Explosive Traps should be picked instead of Survival Tactics on maps like Blade's Edge, Mogambala and sometimes even on Dalaran if you're not going to be the kill target. On Blade's Edge, Mogambala and Dalaran, High Explosive Trap can be used to knock players down to peel for your team or to knock the enemy player away from their team. Dragon Skill Armor should be picked instead of Survival Tactics versus Dot Cleaves like Affliction Warlocks and Shadow Priests. Since Affliction Warlocks are not part of the meta at the moment, this talent isn't used often but will make his comeback if he starts seeing more Warlocks in Arena. Spider Sting should be picked instead of Tracker's Net versus double caster teams. Spider Sting silences a caster for 4 seconds after using an offensive spell while Spider Sting is active on them. Since you won't need your root, you can use Spider Sting to silence the enemy casters instead. The last talent is Viper Sting and could be used versus Rested Druids instead of Tracker's Net. Viper Sting reduces healing done by 30% for 6 seconds, but is removed when the target casts a non-instant healing spell. The reason why this should be used versus Resto Druid is since you won't be using your Tracker's Net since you can't root a Druid. And Resto Druids hardly ever cast a healing spell, but instead keep their target stopped with HOTS. For your Azerite traits, your best traits are Wilderness Survival, Battlefield Focus and Serrated Jaws. For the best damage increase, you want to have one of each trait. 
Serrated Jaws can then be swapped for any trait you prefer instead. For your stats, you want to stack Haste and Versatility. Haste increases the rate at which your dots stick and therefore increases your damage. Mastery is in third place simply because Haste and Versatility offers a bigger damage increase and Critical Strike should never be used. As a survival hunter, you focus on setting up kill potentials, stopping CC, peeling and CC chains to create pressure or peel for your team. The playstyle goals for survival hunter are create pressure, set up a CC chain, peel when under pressure and utilize trigger snap. These playstyle goals apply to nearly every comp and applying them will help you to improve your gameplay as a survival hunter. Create pressure. Survival sustained damage comes from their dots and your first goal is to create pressure for your team by keeping your damage dots active on the kill target. At the start of the game, it's important to get your dots up fast to start creating pressure. Jumping into a clip, we can see one of the top hunters on the EU, Disho, move to his kill target and start dotting him up straight away. Another thing to note from this clip is how Disho saves all of his mobility apart from his harpoon. Mobility spells like Aspect of the Cheetah, Disengage and Master Skull can then be saved to connect onto the kill target later into the game, or to run back to a pillar if your team gets under a lot of pressure. Doing burst windows, simply applying a ton of damage to a target when the enemy team is out of cooldowns can be enough to score a kill. Another way to create pressure for your team is by swapping onto a healer when they use the big cooldown to help their teammates survive. For example, Blessing of Sacrifice from Paladin, or Pain Suppression from Priest, or Iron Bark from Trid. Jumping into the next clip, we can see Disho landing a trap on the enemy Paladin. Since the Paladin used Blessing of Sacrifice before the trap, he swaps onto the Paladin instead, and the Paladin is forced to use another cooldown to keep his team topped. By swapping onto the enemy healer when a big cooldown has been forced, you can stop the enemy healer from topping their teammate and maybe even open up a swap window if you force another cooldown from the enemy healer. Set up a CC chain. Once you successfully have your dots applied on the target, your next goal is to set up a CC chain since you only want to set up a CC chain if you know it will create pressure. This means you should only go for CC if your dots are active. Jumping into the next clip, we can see how to properly set up a CC chain. The friendly Feral lands a full stun on the enemy healer and Disho can easily land a trap out of the stun. In the next clip we can see how Disho lands a trap himself. He puts a tracker's net on the enemy priest and follows up with a trap after. Keep in mind that every healer has an ability to try and avoid traps. Resto shamans have grounding totem, Resto druids have mistweave monks have their mobility, holy paladin has blessing of sacrifice, and Priest has Premonition. The reason why it's so important to have your dots active on the kill target before setting up a CC chain is because while going for CC, your dots will still be dealing damage meanwhile. This means you can play on top of the enemy healer to bait the cooldown and crowding totem, Blessing of Sacrifice or Premonition without even using your trap. When they use a spell like Premonition or Grounding Totem, you can then follow up with trap anyway. Sometimes the pressure of the enemy healer thinking he will get trapped or interrupted is enough to force a cooldown or score a kill. Survival Hunter can also put out a lot of pressure from ranged so you can easily force big cooldowns or even a kill just by playing on top of the enemy healer when your team has pressure. In this clip this show also lands an interrupt on the enemy healer which secures the kill. Peel one under pressure. When your team gets pressured instead, it's important to peel for your team with roots, slows, traps and stuns. Jumping into the next clip, we can see how Tar Trap can peel for your team. The monk is instantly slowed out of a polymorph, which means he has to use all of his mobility to connect onto his target again. In the next clip, we can see how to peel for your team with your stun. The friendly mage gets caught in a full kidney shot, and we can see Trilla Bartom using his stun on the rogue to peel for his team. Jumping into the next clip, we can see how using trap defensively can help your team to recover. Trillabartum is on low health and decides to trap the enemy mage which allows his team to recover. In the next clip, Dishio peels for his healer by using Roar of Sacrifice when his healer is caught and swapped to in the open. When you are under pressure instead, you can use your mobility spells to kite while your team peels for you. Jumping into the next clip, we can see Dishio's team is under pressure and his healer gets caught in a stun. By using Disengage, he can get to a pillar and line of sight to avoid damage until his healer comes out of CC. 
In the next clip, we can see how Dishio uses a Spectre the Cheetah defensively as well to kite while his healer sits through a CC chain. Utilize Tracker's Net. Tracker's Net has many uses and can be used both offensively and defensively. Simply rooting a healer line aside from the team can force a cooldown like Hand of Freedom or even bigger cooldowns. Additionally, if you move to a healer to root him with Tracker's Net far away from the team, you might end up using an ability like Grounding Totem or Premonition, which then lets you trap the target after without having to bait it first. Tracker's Net is also a great ability to use defensively. Simply rooting a DPS when you or your team is under pressure will reduce their chance to hit by 80%, which allows you or your partners to survive. That's gonna be it for this guide guys, please leave a plus skill if you enjoyed it and let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you guys next time.